It's a grant program and it's designed to make grants to small businesses, specifically retail businesses. And so we do this to foster the development of retail businesses in targeted commercial districts. It helps us to revitalize our commercial districts also because most of the growth that we see comes from small businesses. And so this is something we can do to help promote job growth. This household name in the central city was able to open a third store in the former Coles on Holton, thanks in part to the Retail Investment Fund. This Lena's grocery store has some 50 employees from the neighborhood, 30 the result of the grant. Lena's is a um, family-owned grocery operation. It's been in business since the 19, early 1960s. Uh, the operation was started by my parents, Besley and Lena Martin, and um, my brothers and I, took over the business um, in 1996 and we saw it as a very good opportunity to serve um, the east side of Milwaukee and we have a lot of customers that we felt um, that were used to Lena's name on this part of town. Um, there's a $150,000 grant um, that we received from the city of Milwaukee for the creation of 30 new jobs, um, which we did. That $150,000 allowed us to um, equip the store, purchase all the cases and some of the other things that were needed. The total project that w the, um, was over $1.2 million, so this was a, a portion of the project and we had um, capital of our own that we put in it and there was also some, also some bank financing that was involved in it. So um, the $150,000 was definitely not all of what was required um, at the project, but um, it definitely was a very important piece. Of the 47 businesses given the Community Development Block Grants, 30 are minority-owned. The grants created more than 350 jobs in 14 different commercial districts around the city. There has been a bakery in this building since 1929. And while the Wild Flower Bakery was already a thriving business in both New Berlin and downtown Milwaukee, the Retail Investment Fund grant of $40,000 helped the owners open the doors on Lincoln Avenue. Oh, it, it truly was because it allowed us to expand into another community. We really believe in being in the urban communities as much as possible and we found this beautiful old building just about three years ago. Actually, it was a gift to me from my husband on my birthday and uh, we were able to rehab it and uh, bring it back to life and bring something new to the city. I guess I'm not a real typical baker in the fact that at present we don't do any uh, frying of donuts but we're very um, artisan bakers in that we make old artistic breads that they've been making for centuries, and we have uh, given them a new life and brought them into the city. Those specialty breads needed a special oven, and the grant money helped purchase a brick oven imported from Spain. The added retail and wholesale business enabled them to add another half a dozen jobs for people in the community. It was very important, it was critical because uh, one of the things that uh, this building needed was a new oven uh, to make our specialty breads because uh, we wanted to move our, our bread production to this location and uh, we need a special oven to make our, our, our artisan breads. It's, it's a beautiful oven, it uses the old world technique of making bread but it has new options of uh, technology and uh, computerized burner and things. And the TIFF, the, uh, that, that helped us be able to get the oven so that we could make the, uh, the product and also expand our business into the Milwaukee area. It was very easy to work with. The staff at the city uh, was easy to work with. Uh, they helped lead us through the process because we were in a construction process here in the building, with the building anyway, and uh, you know we needed somebody to hold our hand a little bit on this project. Who is eligible? Retail, service, or professional type neighborhood serving businesses. 
They should be pedestrian and street-oriented and provide a public benefit not currently available in the neighborhood. At minimum, a matching amount of money is required. The program does require a matching grant and it also requires job creation. That's the reason we have the program. So if someone has a business and they want to grow the business, they can come and meet with us and we can determine the number of jobs they feel they'll be creating and that really determines the amount of money that they're eligible for. For additional information, you can call the grant coordinator at 286-5811. Officials say the Retail Investment Fund Partnership leverages city resources and benefits the entire community. I think it definitely helps. Um, we've given out 47 of these grants um, since it was formed in 1999, which may not sound like a lot of, a lot of grants to you, but that's about 1.3 million in grants that we've put out into our neighborhood districts, and it really can have a huge impact on a neighborhood. What's more important than the 1.3 million that we put out there is what it leverages, yeah. and it leveraged 12.2 um, million. I'm a, a huge proponent of the city. I really think that uh, people give us a bad rap, and they say, oh, you know, Milwaukee is, you know, kind of going down the tubes like our downtown area and some of our urban areas. But if you don't be a part of a solution, you'll always be a part of the problem. So uh, we're very thrilled that we're able to um, to help not just ourselves, but the people in our community. The city has been very, very good to us, not in just uh, as far as funding is concerned, but encouraging us and helping us to find um, different venues of doing things and working together. Our neighbors and the people in the community here have been very supportive, very thankful that we've come here, and we have nothing but good things to say about the move to this location. It's a program that, that has restrictions, but those restrictions are, are things, if, if you're operating a business, you're going to need to do anyhow. You're going to need employees, so it allows you to um, take part in um, something that the city has um, that is very good. It's a good initiative um, to encourage um, entrepreneurs and existing business, um, business owners to make an investment in the inner city and certain areas that need um, a stimulus to, to, to start them growing. Members of the family that planted the tree and the couple that donated it to the city joined in the official lighting ceremony for the holiday tree. Carol Craw and her family planted the tree 29 years ago. It was a memorial to her son Chuck who died in a car crash in 1974. His brothers were also here for the ceremony. And they had returned to their boyhood home to witness the harvesting of the 30 foot tall Colorado blue spruce. The current owners, Catherine and William Metzen, had decided to remove the tree. When they learned the story from neighbors, they decided that rather than simply cut it down, they would offer it as the city Christmas tree. We thought it would be a nice tribute to the tree. The tree has some history from the previous family. And we thought this way the whole city could enjoy a tree that we had decided needed to be taken off the property. It was an emotional day for the brothers as city forestry crews harvested the tree. Each saved some branches and pine cones. It was a bittersweet occasion for them. We're sad also to see the tree go, but then again, we don't live on this property. It's not our decision, but decision made, I think, is a good decision in respect to the owners of the property. The people are donating the uh, tree that live in the house, and uh, we're fine with it, and uh, hope the people of the city of Milwaukee will enjoy the tree. and. Uh, when it's, when it's done, it's done, and uh, we'll still remember, no matter what, what, what happened here, and, and, and we're good with it. Sharing it seemed to be the right thing to do, said the Metzens. The Craw family agreed. It's now among the many reminders of the Christmas season downtown. Milwaukee Downtown Business Improvement District recognizes how significant it is to provide a really warm, festive holiday atmosphere in order to bring the community together. And that's why we really invest the time and the efforts and the resources in lighting up downtown Milwaukee for the holiday season. 
Pierre Marquette Park is uh, a gingerbread fantasy theme, and it's got, uh, it's beautiful. I think it's one of my favorites ever. It's giant, huge, animated, lighted gingerbread families, and a little gingerbread skipping over a house, and a separate gingerbread house. It's just very, very cute. The gazebo has some gingerbread men in it, and some lighted trees. It's just a lot of fun. Beautiful setting on the Milwaukee River. And then we've got Penguins at Play at Zeidler Union Square, which is located at 4th and Michigan Street. And that is just, that park is loaded with lighted and animated penguins. It's just a fun park to just even take a stroll through. And this year in Cathedral Square Park, we have what's called Holiday Spirit Park. And the centerpiece of that park is a 40 foot tall, which is about this, the, the height of a four story building, uh, Christmas tree. That is, it's a garland tree with red, green, and white lights. And then we've got about a thousand luminaires lighting the pathways in that park and they're just absolutely beautiful. So we had more property owners participate in the Roofline Lighting prog Program so we're up to about I believe 70. If you stroll throughout downtown you're going to notice that more and more property owners are participating in decorating at either the outside or their windows or their doors which is another great addition this year. How did the window door display come about? We have a holiday task force that meets once a month year round and we've got a lot of really great creative high energy people on that task force and we wanted to add another component to the Holiday Lights Festival and get the property owners and businesses involved. Leonard Bernstein is really the concept of the shops of Grand Avenue and there was it was through a company I believe it was called MAD that uh, provides those types of animated displays for a variety of urban malls throughout the country. The Northwestern Mutual Jingle Bus will operate every Thursday through Sunday from 6 to 9 p.m. The last bus will leave at 8.20. The place to catch the Jingle Bus, the only place you can catch a Jingle Bus is the Hilton Milwaukee City Center which is located on 6 in Wisconsin. It costs a dollar and for that you get a 40 minute narrated tour from one of our friendly public service ambassadors and you're going to see all the street decorations, all the parks including Red Arrow Park, you'll see the roof line lighting. While you're waiting you can enjoy complimentary hot cocoa and coffee cookies and the kids will get complimentary coloring books and crayons. So, And with your proof of purchase of ridership parking is only a dollar at the Hilton's parking structure so we make it nice and easy for everybody. Don't forget New Year's Eve. The city celebration includes skating at Red Arrow Park, a band at the Marcus Center, and ringing of the City Hall bell and fireworks at midnight. For a complete listing of holiday activities, visit www.milwaukeeholidaylights.com or call 220-4700 for a guide to all the downtown area events. This holiday season is one that people I think are feeling closer to their families and their friends and I really want to inspire people to come down and you know recapture that childlike joy that we all have inside and slow down a little bit and take time to enjoy life and enjoy the holiday season. Final action on the 2004 city budget came November 24th as the Milwaukee Common Council voted to override six vetoes by Mayor John Norquist. With those votes, Aldermen reaffirmed the decisions they made during budget adoption. The council decided to keep the Villard Avenue Library open next year, continue staffing five firefighters on some engines, and move up the start of two police recruit classes. Garbage pickup remains in a seven-day schedule, and while some plantings will be different, there won't be many changes in boulevard maintenance. As a result, the city property tax rate for 2004 is $9.73 per $1,000 of assessed value, 42 cents lower than the current rate, although assessment increases averaging 7% will affect the bottom line. This year, the owner of a house assessed at $100,000 paid $1,015 for the city portion of the tax bill. If that home increased 7% in value, the 2004 bill would be $1,041. The property taxes paid by homeowners and commercial properties fund only 26% of city services. The most money, 38%, comes in the form of state shared revenues. The rest of the revenue comes from earnings, grants and aids, and the tax stabilization fund. Where does your money go? Public safety gets the most of your city tax dollar, 45%. The Department of Public Works is next with 30%. General government gets 9% of the bill, followed by neighborhoods and development, the health department, and other programs. Wages and health costs account for over 80% of the budget. 
Remember, your property taxes support five local governments. The city gets about one-third of your tax dollar, another third to Milwaukee Public Schools, the rest to Milwaukee County, MATC, and the Sewerage District. The state takes a penny. The overall rate for the combined units of government is $26.17 per thousand dollars of assessed value. That's $1.08 lower than the last bill. That $100,000 home with a 7% average assessment increase would have a total combined bill of $2,800 for the 2004 tax bill. That's up about $75. The average lottery credit this year is $80. If you plan to pay your 2004 property tax bill in person, the city treasurer's office will be collecting property taxes from December 15th to January 31st, generally Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. until 4.45 p.m. The office will be open Christmas Eve day from 8 until noon and New Year's Eve day from 8 until 4.45. Questions about the city budget can be directed to 286-3741, call 286-2240 if you have questions about payment of the property tax bill. Good morning. The Milwaukee Common Council Chambers was the setting as the newest chief was sworn in. The Fire and Police Commission held a special meeting to administer the oath of office to Nanette Haggerty. I, Nanette H. Haggerty, I, Nanette H. Haggerty, having been appointed to the office of Chief of Police, having been appointed to the office of Chief of Police, but not having entered into the duties thereof, but not having entered into the duties thereof, do solemnly swear that, do solemnly swear that, I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will well and faithfully. And will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties of said office. Discharge the duties of said office. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Chief Hegarty was chosen from a field of 25 candidates. A number of them attended the swearing-in ceremony, including Chief Arthur Jones. Fire and Police Commission Executive Director David Hurd presented the new chief with her badge and the stars which indicate her rank. Mayor John Norquist said he's looking forward to her success. She's dedicated to reducing crime and making Milwaukee a safer place. And that dedication will dramatically improve the lives of people throughout the city of Milwaukee. But especially those in neighborhoods where crime is a problem every day. That crime suppresses the ability of people to have the jobs they want, suppresses their ability to have what they want in their neighborhood. And it's so important that crime go down in a central city. The, the success that I'm sure you'll have, Chief Hagerty, is something that's not just to make the aldermen happy or make the media happy. It's to actually impact directly on the lives of people in neighborhoods like the near south side or the center of the central city. That's where it's needed the most. And that's where uh, life can become much better, more jobs, more investment in housing. All of those things are more likely to happen with the success of the police department. Now I know that you and every member of the police department deep down inside have an idealism that burns, that, that causes you to want crime to disappear as much as it possibly can. Every cop feels that way when they take that oath of office. And I know that you're going to revive that feeling in the members of the police department. So they go out and they're able to do the job that they want to do. My pledge to all of you is that I will work cooperatively with you as members of the community to reduce crime, especially violent crime, and to make Milwaukee a safer place in which to live. I would like to thank my police family for attending today, the members of the Milwaukee Police Department. And I look forward to working with each and every one of you to move the department forward 
and to improve the quality of life here in the city of Milwaukee. Being chosen to lead the Milwaukee Police Department is indeed an honor. The Milwaukee Police Department is one of the finest agencies in this great country of ours, and I'm honored and humbled by my appointment as chief. It's important to realize, of course, that the Milwaukee Police Department is not Nanette Haggerty. It is not a one-person organization. This organization consists of well over 2,000 individuals who work as a team to face and overcome the evil of crime on our city streets. It is the team that is the Milwaukee Police Department, not me. We have dedicated, experienced, and qualified men and women on this department who come to work every day, 24 hours a day, in all weather, on holidays, when most people are home enjoying time with their families. The dedication of the men and women of the Milwaukee Police Department is unquestioned. We, as a command staff, as elected officials, and as a community, <coughs> need to appreciate the difficult and tedious work that is done every day by our patrol force and by our investigators. I thank you all for your support. I look forward to working with all of you as a team or as a partnership, if you will, to improve the quality of life in the city of Milwaukee and to reduce crime. Thank you all for coming today.